For a magician, both cards will fit, say, a sub trunk that's been folded down. I think drummers would probably want to have a Model Y, but a guitar, bass, or maybe even a keyboard player could easily go with a Model 3. Of course, singers and comics. Hey guys, this is Illusionist Jason Bishop. I am back with another video. In this case, we're addressing the question, could a Tesla be right for you? This channel is geared towards magicians, but this info also applies to other entertainers as well as car owners in general. We'll get into storage, functionality, range, range anxiety, charging, and overall ownership experience. I have a Tesla Model 3 and Kim drives a Tesla Model Y. Like a lot of other entertainers, we only had vans and trucks previously. Work vehicles had doubled as personal vehicles. It was a little embarrassing going on dates or college back in the day in a white kidnapper van, but you know, we all do what we have to do to make it. Several years ago, we were finally in a position to get a car more so for just personal use and ordered the Tesla Model 3, which was back when they were first announced. So it took roughly two years until it was made and we could pick it up. That car is now almost exactly five years old actually. Our Model Y is just a little bit over two years old. The Model Y is a crossover SUV built on the exact same platform or chassis as the Model 3, which leads to a lot of similarities between the two vehicles. But of course that helps Tesla streamline some production time and cost. The Model Y's front to back dimensions only differ from the three by a little less than three inches. Whereas the height of the cars really differs most significantly. The Model Y has an additional 7.2 inches of height. Other than the seat positioning and overall height, the most obvious difference of the two cars is the rear storage. Our show has grown over the years from acquiring just a small coupe, specifically Kim's Plymouth Laser, which she absolutely loved, but we traded that in to help buy a white kidnapper van for the show. Eventually we traded in the van for a Dodge Durango, which was cool back then, but a major pain in the butt, a major headache with mechanical issues, engine issues, towing issues, it was a problem. After that, we stuck to Dodge Rams, of which we're currently on our third one. They've been pretty good for us. They work well for us and allow us to pull two trailers, obviously not at the same time. One is 16 feet long and the other is 24 feet long. We can pack both of those trailers and still have equipment left over, but when we're not crisscrossing the country with a truck and trailer, we do smaller shows regionally, as well as drive to the airport port to do fly-in shows. Both of our cars are basically stock. They're both all-wheel drive and long-range versions, which is important because we do get snow where we live and because we do make long trips with them. It's important to note that Tesla only offers very limited trim options. They have about five exterior color options, black, blue, red, silver, white, that's about it, and two interior color options, black or white. The white costs a little bit more. They also have a rear wheel option, which is a little cheaper and doesn't go quite as far. They have a long range four wheel drive option, which is what we have, and they have the performance option, which is also four wheel drive, but has bigger calipers for better braking, and it can go a little bit faster. And I think it comes with track mode, which I don't even know what that is, but it's some kind of thing where you can drive your car like a race car driver. Most of the other options are software based like upgrading your zero to 60 speed. And yes, you heard that correctly. You can make your car faster through an over the air purchase from Tesla, depending on your current specs. You can also add a wireless data package for the infotainment system, as well as purchase enhanced autopilot and full self driving. Oh, and there's also two to three different wheel trims depending on which type of car you pick. You'll notice that the cars have similar stylings inside and out. They have a clean, modern exterior look and a sophisticated, although sparse, interior look. They do have a real wooden trim panel on the dash. I guess it really is a dash board. There is a large central touchscreen display and no other displays at all, unlike the Model S and X, which have front dash displays as well. The physical buttons are limited to emergency four ways up top two multi-function wheeled buttons on your steering wheel, window controls, and the doors are open with a button as well. That's mostly it. The large screen in the center shows navigation data, music info, and can be used for streaming services like Hulu or Netflix while the car is in park. You know, using the touchscreen though while driving is not always as easy and safe as you might prefer, but the car does have pretty good voice command and is capable of controlling a lot of the features from music volume to air conditioning to the glove box. It's good to use voice commands for features that otherwise would require too much hunting around the screen. Now, of course, you can put the car into autopilot pretty quickly by tapping the right steering wheel stock down twice. So that's pretty easy. Let's get the storage because for magicians and a lot of other entertainers and families, that's a deal breaker or maker. So firstly, unlike most cars, Teslas all have a frunk or front trunk. This area can be helpful and I'm sure it'll have even greater use in the upcoming 
upcoming Cybertruck as its front is quite a bit larger. I've not experienced this issue, but I've heard there is a risk that the front might not open at times due to harsh snow or ice, mechanical failure, or other issues. Whether that's true or not, for that reason, we almost never put critical show equipment in the front. Now this front is actually quite full for me. I keep a bottle of windshield wiper fluid in there. For some reason, my car goes through a lot of windshield wiper fluid. There's no oil, obviously. There's only one little port up here for your windshield wiper fluid. This is an anti-rodent thing. You put it in there to repel rodents because living out in the woods, I have twice had my wiring harness chewed out actually on this car. This is a Tesla charger kit. There is also some sort of a tow thing underneath here. If you pull this up, underneath there, there's some sort of a tow thing so that you can uh, get your car towed if you need to. If it's clean and you're going somewhere and you wanna put some food in or something for a party or what have you, you're going to, not a bad area maybe for that as well. It's not heated or cooled or anything, it's whatever the temperature is uh, outside. When you close that up, you come here and then you put your hands on either side and press down. So the Model Y frunk is extremely similar. It is certainly deeper, so you can fit more in here, which is odd because we actually have less things in here. Leaves and stuff do get in here. Sometimes it gets under the side, then when you lift up, they go inside of there, so those things have to be cleaned out sometimes, obviously. But, you know, this is a real car. We really use it. It's not just some YouTube product. This is our actual car. And so, you know, there's some mess in there. One thing that many people don't know is that because Teslas don't have gas tanks, they have an unusual and very helpful deep storage area in the rear. It's a pretty large area on both models. I've heard it said that the rear well is actually big enough to fit an entire beer keg. And honestly, I would believe that. Our Pelican 1510 case fits in there with enough room left over for a mid-sized backpack and some room on the sides to spare, actually. The measurements for the Model 3 are 184.8 inches long by 72.8 inches wide and 56.8 inches tall, with the trunk space coming in at 22.9 cubic feet, which to my understanding is pretty good for a sedan. The Model Y eclipses that with over a third more space having a 34.3 cubic foot cargo capacity or up to 76.2 cubic feet if the rear seats are folded down. Now, to put that into practical terms, I'm gonna show you a standard loadout that we use for stand-up shows as well as for corporate and cruise ship fly-in shows. These are the actual cases we use. We often use a Pelican 1510, two full-size away suitcases, which separate note and maybe a separate video have been the most reliable suitcases we've owned and we've tried quite a few. From very expensive Briggs and Riley to just cheap ones at Walmart and these have been really the best. We also have a Pelican Air 1615, which rounds out our standard cargo. We've done shows with all of this equipment, plus a little bit more in the smaller Model 3, while even having our assistant Ellen with us. So that's three full-grown adults, all of this equipment and more, and a little dog, as well as some backpacks and like little food containers and stuff. And of course it was tight, but it all actually worked fine enough, it worked well enough. The fact though that the Model 3 is a sedan makes for a really tight area to get things deeper into the trunk, and you'll need at least one seat folded down to accommodate the other cases. Of course, this reduces the amount of passengers that you can travel with. Now, the Model Y, on the other hand, is literally made for storage. It's a much more versatile car. The back well is larger than the threes, and it even has an additional small flat storage area. You can't put a lot in there, but you can put something in there. In our case, all of our equipment can actually fit in the trunk area of the hatchback. Now, we might have a small food bag or some backpacks up front, but usually that's it. It leaves a very comfortable space for a third passenger, or slightly tight space for two back seat passengers. For ease of storage and keeping your equipment out of the way, the Model Y is the clear winner. If you're going to only be transporting yourself and maybe one other person, you can store many of the same things in the Model 3. It just takes more careful planning and is a little bit more of a pain to load in and load out, but it is completely possible. We do also use the Model Y more than the Model 3 for picking picking up gardening, building, and household supplies like bags of mulch, wood, paint, salt, or gravel. We have used the Model 3 for that too, but the crossover SUV nature of the Model Y just makes it much easier. Honestly, a pleasure with the Model Y and an effort with the Model 3. Now, both vehicles handle smoothly and have a much more comfortable ride than our Ram 2500 truck, but the Model Y just allows for much more convenient storage space. For a magician, both cars will fit say a metamorphosis that's been broken down, but the Model Y will do it a lot easier. I think drummers might really want a Model Y, but guitar, bass, or maybe even keyboard players could probably do fine with the sportier Model 3. 
Of course, singers and comics can probably pick whichever they prefer. The biggest issue after storage is usually range anxiety or how far you can go in a charge and how long it takes to recharge. Now, the models roughly get between 272 miles on a charge up to 358 miles, depending on your motor option and the selected range type. Our Model 3 and Model Y are both long range, so each gets roughly 300 or more miles on a 100% full charge. The larger and newer Model Y winning out with an extra 20 or 30 miles more than the Model 3 in our case. In a lot of environments like doing gigs around a city like New York, Vegas, or Orlando, I cannot really foresee any issue as long as you're charging 80 to 90% each night. You could easily have well over 100 miles of charge left per day. There's no question about that. Honestly, the only big issue we've had, and it's the only thing that gives us pause, is long distance driving or cross country driving. We do a gig sometimes where we have to travel through four states on the same day as the gig and then drive back home. We have to stop about once or twice, and one of the stops to recharge will take roughly 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more actually. We usually reserve this refill for later at night so that we can kind of like lay back, rest our eyes while the car is charging, maybe throw on Netflix, whatever, but just kind of chill out and get some downtime while it's charging. And that's honestly not too bad, and it certainly slows your day down though, that's absolutely for sure. Now, if you're in a hurry and traveling cross country, that would add up and could very easily get irritating, I would think. Now, when you use your GPS, the car will actually calculate the fuel consumption and create a route that includes supercharging station stops and even tells you how long you have to charge to continue. Now, this is a really helpful feature and a lot of chargers are at decent gas stations like Sheets or Wawa on the East Coast. I don't know what you guys have that way on the West Coast, but I know there's a lot of chargers out there anyway. So pro tip on that, if you're in bad weather or even sometimes if you're not, you just might wanna stop one charging station before the suggested stop in case the scheduled station has any issues. This has happened to us. You don't wanna roll in on almost empty and find out that there's a big problem at that station. Think unplowed snow. That actually happened to us and we got to test how good our four wheel drive was and it was pretty good, but the high snow actually really, it took out our hard mud flaps, which kind of wasn't cool. So usually you'll just charge nightly at home and be totally ready to go the next day, but charging on the road, it can take as little as 10 minutes. It can take more than 45 minutes. You just have to plan your day a tiny bit more than with a regular car for long trips. Superchargers are pretty amazingly quick, but if the charging station is rather full, or if there's a car right next to yours using the same terminal, your charging time can take almost double, actually. The hardest time to charge while traveling is easily on the holidays. Normally, it's honestly not really a big deal. Now, if you're a two-car family, you might consider having one electric car and then one that's gas. It's just, you know, more options. If you're flying out and your car will be parked at, say, the airport for an extended period of time, you'll probably want to turn off your sentry mode as that security feature drains something like 10 miles of charge a day, and that adds up. I've made that mistake and needed to find a charger ASAP after returning when I otherwise wouldn't have needed it. So as for charging and fuel consumption, most people only really drive 30 miles on average a day, something like 34, I think. So if you charge at home, you'll always have enough fuel. The newer long range Model 3s have an EPA rated mileage of 333 miles and the Model Y has an EPA rating of 330 miles. It's really good to note that because Teslas carry their batteries at the bottom of the car, they have a very low center of gravity which helps them handle better and greatly reduces the risk of rollovers. So Teslas are actually rated near the top of the line for car safety in all factors and all four Tesla models have achieved five stars in safety from the US NHTSA, so that's like the National Highway Safety people, whatever. And also the fact that they can accelerate as quickly as they can works as a safety feature too. So it sounds funny, but having that amount of instant pickup allows you to get away from potential accidents or reckless drivers very quickly. If you don't quite know what I'm saying about that and you get a Tesla, you will very quickly learn what I mean about that. It's, it's almost like time travel, how quickly they can move. They move quicker than most other cars and it just gives you options that you otherwise wouldn't have in, in most cars. So also an important side note, like nearly a third of vehicles today, Teslas do not come with a spare tire. You can use roadside assistance, you can also keep an emergency sealant kit with you, or you can actually even purchase a spare tire and put it in your trunk. Some people actually do that. 
but just know it does not come with one and there is no dedicated storage area for one. If a tow assembly is installed, both models can pull a trailer, although I don't know if the Model 3 is permitted to in the United States, but this will of course reduce your range. The trailer would have to be a fairly limited size and weigh 3,500 pounds or less. For a band moving some speakers, a mixer, some cables, and a couple instruments around town or the county, that honestly might work just fine. All in all, they're both fun, sleek, modern vehicles. They both are fast and easy to drive. They both have great entertainment and driver assist features. They both are exceedingly safe. They both have simple modern interiors, but the Model 3 is a little lower and harder to get into. The Model Y looks a little more like a cool family car, but it has tremendous functionality and shares almost all the same features as the Model 3. Now, both come with autopilot and can be upgraded as high as full self-driving for a fee, and that fee keeps getting bigger and bigger as time goes on. Between the two, it's honestly quite the toss-up for me. I've gone back and forth on which I like more. For pure fun, I think the Model 3 wins, but the Y being so similar to the three wins out in practicality for sure. If you haven't yet, go schedule a no-obligation test drive with Tesla and see what you think for yourself. If you have any tips or tricks or thoughts, leave them below in the comments. There is a promo code in the description area below that you can use to get Tesla's latest incentive if you buy a Tesla and you apply that code. Plus it helps me out if you use it too, so you know, win-win. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and destroy that like button. We'll see you guys in the next one.